Good morning and welcome to Second Congregational Church, where whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome here this morning. I'm glad that you have joined me and that we are all gathering together at the same time on Sunday morning online as best we can. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, that music provided to us by Sue Green. Thank you, Sue. And I'm glad to see everyone greeting one another on uh, the YouTube comments. Gay, uh, uh, Gay is joining us from Albany. She says hello from Rainy Albany. Well, hello from Rainy Bennington. It's rainy here as well, but we are grateful for this day and grateful for this time that we have with one another. I have a few announcements to share with you before we get going with our worship. The first I'd like to address why we're in my home. Um, and we've been in my home for a couple weeks. The, the first reason was that I was really committed to doing this live and being here with you live on Sunday morning, and I just don't trust the internet at church. Um, and so that's why I've been doing it here uh, live. But some had been asking for, could we, could we do it at the church? We wanna see the church. And um, so I had thought about it, and my intention was for this week to go down to the church and pre-record a section of the service, uh, uh, the scripture reading and maybe a sermon, and drop that in and have so we could have a portion of it at the church. Uh, but then the stay-at-home order from the governor came, and I want to encourage everybody to abide by this as best we can, we, we, that we all do our part um, to to stay safe and stay at home and not and stop the spread. So um, I felt it would be hypocritical for me to encourage you to, to be staying home and then dropping in a video saying, here, look at me not being at home. So we're all, home, we're all here together and wherever we are is a sacred place. It's our intention that makes some place sacred. Um, and so all of creation is sacred. God is with all of us. And so God is here in this room with me and um, God is in your home with you. And we are all connected by, by God's spirit. We are all with one another. And so I'm glad that you are all with me and I invite you to my living room uh, this morning. And I'm glad that you're inviting me and welcoming me, me into your living rooms or offices or bedrooms or wherever you are. I invite you to bring your full self, your whole self, and um, the Spartacus is going to bring his whole self um, with us this morning as well. Um, so we are glad that you are here. I'm glad that uh, we can be together in this way. We will join one another. I invite you to join us uh, for our fellowship time on Zoom, um, an online uh conferencing platform so that we can all get together and see one another and, and chat with one another and the invitation to the zoom meeting is uh, in the email invitation uh, up to worship it's also in the YouTube description updates on our church building and office the church building is locked down it is closed uh, now and for the duration of this stay-at-home order. Uh, the church office has been moved to Robin Hoig's home, so she is working from home, and she is best reachable by the church email line. Um, the phone at the church will go to voicemail. Uh, leave a voicemail there, and um, Robin and I will both be checking that frequently, so you will get a call back if you leave a message there, or you can email Robin and request a call, and, and she'll call you Again, during her normal office hours, 9 to 1, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, Sunday suppers are continuing. Uh, we will be serving Sunday supper takeout to go meals at 5 o'clock this afternoon uh, at the church. Uh, if you are interested in volunteering and helping with that Sunday supper somehow, um, please do contact Marsh Hudson Knapp. The April open door will be going out. Um, Robin will be putting that together again from her home office. And so she is inviting your submissions to the open door. The deadline for that uh, issue will be April 12th, which is Easter Sunday. We are still experimenting with the online worship. If you tuned in right at uh, noon, you 
uh, right at, at 10 rather, um, you were not greeted with the feed right away. I had a technical issue and uh, getting the stream started and then um, there was another technical bump <laughs> um, where the music started and then it stopped and then it started again. But um, I'm working out the kinks and uh, we're, we're getting it going. Um, David Durfee told me a story on the phone the other day about Yo-Yo Ma on, a, on an interview via Skype on NPR and they uh, asked him to play and he said it sounded just, uh, uh, the audio was just as poor as Matt's audio was last week. So I hope that, uh, I hope you can um, give us a little bit of grace as we work out these kinks, but I think that uh, we are, we are getting, getting there. I, um, I did have an online Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We had our first meeting last week. Um, again, you will, you're all invited again on this week. It's Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, that will be on Zoom, and there will be a, an invitation going out by email on Tuesday. It will also be on our Facebook page. So let us begin with an opening prayer. So would you pray with me, please? God of promise and hope, we come to you feeling dried up, like a valley filled with dry bones. Share your visions of new life with us, that we might have hope for our future. Bring us up from the grave, that we might live as people of promise. Put your spirit within us that we might have life everlasting. Amen. We turn to God in prayer not because we are compelled, but because God invites us. We come to God not because of our righteousness, but because of God's grace. In that spirit, we offer this prayer of confession and transformation. And I invite you to join me in this prayer. Lord of life, we come to you consumed by our worry and our pain. We blame, when we blame you for not being there in our need, forgive us. When we turn away from you in moments of loss, Guide us back to your faithful arms. For we long to put our faith in you and, and your promised healing. We yearn to truly believe that you are the resurrection and the life. Teach us once more, merciful one, that you weep when we weep and rejoice as we find our way home. Amen. God makes us a promise. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. The one who showed Ezekiel that a valley of dry bones could live again will bring us newness of life through Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. Amen. We come to this time of blessing the child in all of us a time uh, where we all would remember who we truly are, that each of us is a beloved child of God, created in the divine image and loved beyond all measure. And uh, this Sunday, as I thought about this time, I recalled a, a post that our friend Joe Hall made to our Facebook page. Uh, he, he sent it to me, emailed it to me as well. And so I'd, I'd like to read this, uh, uh, this to you. Joe writes, I miss the social gatherings, church services, coffee time with friends, shopping for our needs, etc. The economy is taking a hit. What will life be like after all this is over? We do not know. That being said, we want our loved ones, friends, and neighbors to be safe. We need to protect them from this killer disease. 
We all need to stay away from one another so we don't catch the virus, get sick, or carry it and give it to others who are vulnerable. We need to do all these things we can and leave the rest to God. We need to have hope and faith. Joe continues, during World War II when England was being bombed by the German air raids, Winston Churchill, Vera Lynn, and others were spreading hope and promise. Joe says he was in grade school during the war. White Cliffs of Dober was a very popular song sung by Vera Lee Lynn. The lyrics in part, there'll be blue birds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see. There'll be love and laughter and peace ever after tomorrow when the world is free. The shepherd will tend his sheep. The valley will bloom again. And Jimmy will go to sleep in his own little room again. While London was being hammered with bombs, Berlin and others were spreading hope and promise. Another song of Berlin's during the war was, We'll meet again. And it continues, Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Vera traveled England during the war to entertain the troops to places that were not safe, where other entertainers would not go, such as Burma. She was known as the Force's sweetheart. She gave them promise and hope when things looked so bleak. For her service to England, Queen Elizabeth named her Dame Vera Lynn. She is still living at 103. God's peace and love to all. Joe Hall. Thank you, Joe, for your contribution and to, for your writing, for your reminder that hope and God's still speaking voice can come to us from unexpected places, from Vera Lynn songs and other songs and poems, other works of art that give us hope. And so, children of God, listen for that still speaking voice of God in unexpected places, in places other than the Bible, and other than hymns. God's hope is being spread. And beloved children of God, remember who you truly are, that each of you is a beloved child of God created in the divine image and loved beyond all measure. Amen. We have now a special treat coming up, a, a musical selection by Matt Edwards. And during Matt's playing, I invite you to put forth your prayer requests if you have them either on the YouTube comments or the, or the, or the Facebook uh, comments if you're watching on Facebook.
Thank you, Matt. As we turn to scripture, would you pray with me, please? Open our minds, I, Holy One. Prepare our hearts to receive your call in our lives through the word we hear proclaim. Wake us to your truths. Use your word to set us along the right path this day. May the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. Amen. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is the, there is steadfast love, and with God is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And from Ezekiel, the prophet. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. And there it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and they will live. And say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied to, as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy to mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And I prophesied, and he commanded me, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the bone whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from the graves, O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. I will place you on my own soul in your on I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken and will act says 
says the Lord. May God add a blessing to these readings. These are the lectionary readings from this morning. The gospel reading from this morning was this is a story from the Gospel of John, a story about a man named Lazarus. And Lazarus had a brother, had two sisters, Mary and Martha, and they were all uh, acquainted with Jesus. They were all, one would call them friends of Jesus. And the three of them lived in a town called Bethany, right outside of Jerusalem, less than two miles from Jerusalem, from the temple in Jerusalem. And Jesus was not with them when Lazarus got sick. But Mary and Martha wrote to Jesus and sent him a message and said, Come, Jesus, our, our dear brother Lazarus, whom you love, whom you love, He's, he's fallen ill, and we know, we know that you can save him. We know that you, if you come here, you will make him well. And Jesus got the message, and he was concerned, and he knew that he would make things right. But he didn't leave right away. In fact, he waited two, two days before he left. And by the time he, he got to Bethany. By the time he arrived to Mary and Martha's home, Lazarus was dead. In fact, Lazarus had been dead for four days, and Mary and Martha were beside themselves with grief, and they cried and fell upon Jesus and said, Oh Lord, if you had just been here, if you had just come, our brother would still be alive. We know you could have saved him. And Jesus, he smiled and said, take me to his grave. And they said, he has been dead for four days. He, what can we do there? And they said, he said, remove the stone. And they removed the stone. And Jesus called out, Lazarus come out. And Lazarus came out. And it's said that all who witnessed glorified God and knew who Jesus truly was. The psalmist cries out in this plaintive psalm, crying out from the pit of despair, from the from out of the depths I cry to you, O oh God, Lord, hear my voice. We cry out from the pit of despair, from the pit of our isolation, from the pit of our dried up economy. We cry out in for Jesus, for God to help us, protect us, save us, end this illness. Others, though, call out from this, and they call upon us to sacrifice our elders on the idol of the economy. These calls are anti-life. These calls are anti-God. These calls are unfaithful and wrong. We need not sacrifice anyone for the sake of our economy, and it's short-sighted anyhow. Our economy is our people, and we don't sacrifice anybody for those for those purposes. No matter how far in the depths we feel we are. From the depths we should be calling out to God. We should call out to the spirit of life.
God grants hope to the desperate and new life to the spiritually dead. That's the, that's the point of the story of, of Ezekiel with the dry bones. This is a vision, understand. Not a literal story. It's a vision that God gives Ezekiel and says, Yes, I know your people, Israel. You are in exile and you feel as though you are drying up. You are in isolation and you feel as if you are drying up. But I will grant you new life and I will put my spirit within you. You think that your brother Lazarus is dead, Jesus says to Mary and Martha. But I will bring him forth. I will call him from the grave. A story to remind us who God is, that God is a source of life that cannot be overcome by the darkness. And that we will get through this despair. We will get through this time of trial. We will find new life. And when we get back to that new life, will we Go back to taking service workers for granted. Those ones that are working in the grocery stores and the gas stations. The, those ones working in the restaurants that we can't go to. Will we remember the heroics of our healthcare workers? Those nurses and doctors putting them themselves at risk. Those retired nurses and doctors all over the country returning to service. Will we cherish our global interconnectedness? Will we know, realize that we are more connected than we realize and we need to be in relationship with one another? Or will we turn on the foreigner? Will we blame their cultures for our problems, for our suffering? I haven't mentioned Lent these last couple weeks. Lent is a time of considering what is dead in our lives. Where do we need God's breath upon dry, dusty bones? This time of uh, isolation, this time of social distancing, this crisis that we can all either be united by or divided by, offers us an opportunity to examine our lives and our culture and our society, our nation. What kind of nation do we want to be? when we get that new life, when we get through this. As we approach Palm Sunday, let us consider what kind of world we want to go back to when we go back to normal. Do we want to go back to just everything being the way things were, or do we desire the breath of new life that God is looking to offer us in our own lives, in the life of our nation? in the life of our world. Amen. Let us, from our, let us join the psalmist and turn to God in prayer, both in gratitude and in concern and in looking for hope. Please pray with me. And as we pray, as I say, God, in your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray, Spartacus. Out of the depths, we cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voices and be attentive to our prayers. 
We pray for those whose hope is lost, who feel dried up and cut off from you, O source of life. By your grace, open their graves, bring them back to the land of the living. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are oppressed, held captive by the power of death. Release them from their chains, unbind them, and let them go. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who weep, lost and lifeness, lifeless in fear and regret. Grant them the peace of your presence. Show them what your love can do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are dying, the life, the light of life fading in their eyes. Help them to believe in you so that you may live and never die. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for all of those serving us, all those service workers in gas stations, in grocery stores, utility workers, all those healthcare workers, workers nurses and doctors, and especially our home healthcare aides, so vital to many lives. Protect them, O oh God. Give them strength. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we offer up prayers of your people, your people of Second Congregational Church, who pray for Bruce, who is battling bronchitis, has been battling bronchitis for a month and all those health concerns other than COVID. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we join with brothers, brothers and sisters across the globe today to pray for common unity, mutual he healing, care for each other and for our earth. We believe in a higher power who a caring, compassionate, merciful God who tells us in Scripture, cry out to me and I will answer you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers from, requested from Bonnie Holden for her daughter Jennifer, Jennifer Holden and her husband John Brennan, who are struggling with the COVID-19 virus. Both have had high fevers, dry coughs, body aches, loss of sense of smell, and are struggling to care for their 18-month-old toddler, Aiden. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Another prayer request from Bonnie for John Brennan's six-year-old nephew who is being treated for mature B-cell lymphoma at Boston Children's Hospital. He was also recently diagnosed with the COVID-19 virus, the first child in the United States of his age, and he and his father are being quarantined in the ICU unit at Boston Children's Hospital. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for all children and adults who find themselves trapped in an unsafe environment. May they, not, may they know they are not alone and find the voice to ask for help. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our kids, both big and small, who are struggling to make sense of what is happening and how to process their emotions, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for children who may be home with abusive parents, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for those who cannot shelter in place in Africa and other countries who do not have access to doctors, testing, or even a daily food supply. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. My client, Nora, is offering a prayer for a client who offered to stop treatment for herself, but will continue paying for others. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers of joy for George Sohn as he celebrates another birthday. God, in your God, in gratitude, in our gratitude, hear our prayer. Prayers for those who are tempted to relapse into unhealthy habits during their isolation. In your mercy, O oh God, hear our prayer. For Ralph, in critical condition with presumptive positive COVID-19. And for dear cousin Leah, who a nurse without proper PPE. Prayer from Mary Chambers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For immigrants, refugees, and their families in places that put them at very high risk for a, during a pandemic. Especially, I would add, those in ICE custody. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For elderly who are in nursing homes and unable to have visits from family and friends, some are even secluded in their rooms who, where meals are brought to them. Especially, I would add, those in our, of our friends in Brookdale, in River's Edge, in Bennington Health and Rehab, and other Bennington homes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For families who struggle with having enough while staying at home, may the children be taken care of and the adults relieved of anxiety and stress. In your mercy, O oh God, hear our prayer. For Deb's nephew, Brian, who is being tested for COVID-19. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O oh Lord, for having heard our prayers. Enable us to trust in you and thus to see your glory through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, in whom we pray as he taught us to, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We have an offering time in our service at this point uh, when we gather on Sunday mornings in person. And so I invite you to consider uh, making an offering this week to Second Congregational Church. Uh, you can do so on our, on our website at the donate, donate page, or you can still mail, mail your contributions into the church. Mail is being collected on a daily basis, and your checks will be deposited as quickly as possible. We also normally have uh, special offerings at least once a month, and we have a very special offering uh, scheduled for the first uh, Sunday in April. It's one great hour of sharing, and so I'd like you to consider supporting one great hour of sharing. Again, you can designate an offering via our website on the donate page there, or you can mail in a check to the, to the church and write on that memo line, one great hour of sharing. And so here's a short video on One Great Hour of Sharing and why it's so important to give to One Great Hour. In Haiti, there's a saying, 
After mountains, more mountains, and it's true. After an earthquake, then a hurricane where crops are destroyed, homes swept away, loved ones lost. After mountains, more mountains, but here, among the people of Haiti, it's also true that there is hope. And after hope, more hope. Hope in a community that pools its resources to build a school and to pay teachers a living wage. Hope in a small business co-op where women build a bakery, making bread for their families and for sale in the market. Hope in an agricultural co-op that gave Fort Toulouse a low interest loan so he could reseed his farm. Instead of struggling to pay off high interest rates, Fort Toulouse is able to focus on planting vegetables for his family and trees that will one day reforest a nation. Your gift to one great hour of sharing supports communities across Haiti where people are coming together to be there for one another. So come, be a part of the movement. One great hour of sharing is here, which means you are here. And when you are here, there is hope. And after hope, more hope. Let us pray for and dedicate our offerings to God. Giver and sustainer of life, bless our gifts received electronically and by mail, gifts for our church and for one great hour of sharing. Bless them that they may be multiplied and go farther than all of our imaginings. We pray all these things in our Lord Christ. Amen. And now let us say together our commission that we would go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And know that God's breath upon weary and dry bones will bring new life, even in the pits of despair, even in the midst of isolation. And join us to break that isolation on Zoom directly following. I'll open up the Zoom meeting as soon as the stream has ended. Now receive this blessing in the words of the Apostle Paul. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we share peace with one another by the Spirit of God, I thank Matt again for his final contribution this morning. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen.